I recently realized that we haven't really been putting our five minute sonar videos on our YouTube page. My bad. We're going to start putting them on there about every week just to start building that library up, that section of our YouTube channel at Core Ultrasound. Now, some of these videos are going to be a little bit on the old side, but if they haven't been updated, it either means that number one, the data is still good in them, or number two, I just haven't had time to get around to it. So we're slowly going through these and we're updating these, but we really want to share with you all, all those five minute Sona videos that we have. Now, briefly, if you don't know what they are, what our five minute Sona videos are, are really quick, just short lectures around five minutes, most of them are five minutes or less, where we kind of just show you the basics of how to do a specific examination. We're not going to talk about every scenario. We're not going to talk about all of the evidence, when to use it. We're going to assume that you already want to use this and you just want a refresher or a quick primer on specifically how to do that examination. So check out the video and let me know what you think. Hello, in this video, we are going to discuss how to diagnose a pericardial effusion using your bedside ultrasound. The probe of choice for this examination is going to be the phased array transducer. And as far as the best view, you can really use any view that you want of the heart. But usually the one that we talk about is the sub xiphoid view. If you're unfamiliar with this view, I'd recommend checking out the obtaining a cardiac windows five minute sono video. On the left side, we see a sub xiphoid view without a significant pericardial fusion. And then on the right side, we see a pericardial fusion. Remember, fluid is hypoechoic or dark on ultrasound. And we're seeing on this right side, a uh, kind of good size pericardial fusion over here. This is the right heart and this is the left heart and even a little sliver of it down here. Now, I did mention the phased ray transducer is your probe of choice, but the curvilinear transducer works as well. You might have a little bit of a higher resolution to pick up that smaller pericardial effusion, but your frame rate is going to suffer a little bit with this specific transducer. You don't just have to use a sub xiphoid view. This right here is an apical four chamber view. We have normal on the right, abnormal right here on the left, a little sliver of a pericardial effusion. This is a parasternal long axis view of the heart. And this one's nice because sometimes if you're not sure if something is a pericardial a cardio effusion or a pleural effusion, you can use this view to help you tell the difference. And the key is this guy right here. This is the descending aorta. If the thing that you think is a pericardial effusion is seen going anterior to the descending aorta, it is a pericardial effusion. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank. And we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. This is a parasternal short axis view. You can see here this fluid all the way around this heart and here's that descending aorta. This is normal. Next, let's talk about some foils when looking at pericardial fusions. This right here is something that I see fairly frequently. This right here is a pericardial fat pad. Now you gotta be careful to understand that this is not the effusion. There is a little bit of an effusion right here, coincidentally, a little sliver of hypoechoic fluid right there. And there's also probably some peritoneal fluid up here. Even though this looks like it's above the heart, your probe is in the sub xiphoid region. So you're actually going through the abdomen to get to the heart. So this is peritoneal fluid. This right here is something that can kind of look similar to a fat pad, but you see how this isn't really tethered to the endocardium of the heart, whereas this is over here. This is actually a clot within the pericardium. This is regular blood over here. This was due to a coronary artery dissection. If you look over here, here is another clot. Now this one here, it looks like it's a little more affixed to it relative to this one, but this one right here is still a clot and not a fat pad because it's still kind of jiggling separate from that heart. This one was from a gunshot wound to the chest. Here is another view of a fat pad up here with an effusion. This is a apical four chamber view. And if we zoom in right here, we can see that this is fluid and this is just stuck right onto that heart, making this a fat pad. Remember that parasternal long axis view, how I said that you can use the descending aorta to make sure that the fluid that you see is not a pleural effusion. This is an example of an actual pleural effusion. So you see how this is going posterior or deep to this descending aorta. 
this is a pleural effusion. If it was a pericardial effusion, this would go anterior to the descending aorta in between the peritoneal long axis view and the aorta. And just to compare, this is a pleural effusion over here deep to the aorta, and this is a pericardial effusion going anterior to the aorta. And this, of course, is one of both. So here we have that descending aorta. We have a small pericardial effusion as well as a pleural effusion down here. This kind of wavy stuff in here, by the way, is a mirror artifact of the heart up here. This is not really a foil. It's just something different that you can see. Sometimes you can see little squiggly things within that effusion. And this usually happens when the patient has an inflammatory effusion or they have a chronic effusion. Here are a couple of other examples of different things that you can see in the pericardium. Both of these are due to gunshot wounds. These right here are B lines that you're seeing within the pericardium. This is due to air within that pericardial sac and fluid. This is because air from the gunshot wound was introduced into the pericardium. And this right here is pneumomediastinum. You actually can't even see the heart. All you're seeing is this uniform white line with a bunch of A lines underneath it. Pneumomediastinum and pneumopericardium. To summarize, the best view to look for a pericardial effusion is really any view of the heart, but probably the best one's going to be the subxiphoid view. Don't forget that pericardial fat pads can sometimes be a little bit confusing. And then remember, the presence of an effusion does not mean that the patient has hemodynamic compromise from that effusion. Diagnosing tamponade will be covered in a separate video. Hopefully that was helpful for you all. I can't wait to hear from you soon and happy scanning.